Welcome to How to Build a Tent. This show is not about tent building, but it's how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening and watching the show. For those new subscribers on YouTube, welcome. So glad that you are here with me and my son in the studio. He loves listening to the show. So every once in a while I let him sit in, but he's a really talkative young kid and he's under a year old, so I can't really f figure out how to tell him to mute. So if you hear a baby, it's my cute, adorable son who I can't deny watching the show. He loves it. I, it's probably not for the business business discussion, more probably for the lights, but I will take it. Today we're going to talk about the three ways your small business can reach new customers. And also we're going to talk about a really interesting incubator idea out in Pennsylvania. There's a really cool video with this article, but they wouldn't let me share it. So I'm not going to share the article. Uh, but I want to talk about the three points that they brought out and the importance of it and then this incubator idea And I want to talk about this more because I've had a lot of you reach out to me about Christian Venture capitalists people looking to invest in Christian companies and for those of you that are interested in that and want to raise money to do that kind of a thing then this might be a unique opportunity to do your own spin-off of it before we get into it and talk about how to get new customers, you need to go over to fightlaughfeast.com because we are part of the Fight Laugh Feast network. Go become a member, put in HTBT in the memo field and get one of these great 15 ounce mugs for free when you subscribe to any of those subscription tiers that they have and they have tons of other great benefits that you get and they even will give you some great merchandise as well so check those out make sure to put htbt in the memo field and you will be blessed because you'll get great stuff great content and you'll be coming alongside of us to proclaim the lordship of jesus in every area of life thank you for all those who have already subscribed put that htbt in the memo field cheers to you Okay, now this article, the first thing they talk about is grow or die. And I will say this, I think it should be grow fast or die. Not that it needs to be a panic, but you need to be growing at a rate that is going to let your company be sustainable, that you're gonna cover all of your costs. And that is not gonna be something that is kind of like leading you on where you have small amount of hope that it can go on and you're just losing money, you're, you're giving it away, you're, spe you're spending too much time on it and it's just not working out. Like that kind of growth that's very small and incremental isn't gonna be good enough. But it's really important to continue to grow your customer base for a number of reasons. One, not every customer is gonna stay with you for the rest of their life. They might find another company that provides a better value for them. They might move away. They might lose the ability to buy. Remember, demand is the willingness and the ability to buy. It's really important you remember that when you are looking for a customer and your target customer. And so there's a bunch of different reasons why customer churn happens. And the better you can do at retaining customers and growing your customer base and using organic ways to grow your customers, using those customers that are staying and loyal customers, champions, the smaller your customer acquisition cost is, which is another important KPI or indicator or statistic, however you want to say it, that you need to watch because the lower your customer acquisition cost is, the more competitive you can be against your competitors and the better that you are going to do. So you need to grow fast or you're gonna die. And not just grow at small little paces where you can barely hold on, where you're not making rent, where you're not making money, but you need to grow in a way where you can be competitive where you can use that cash to reinvest in your company and to continue to grow exponentially faster than your competitors. Now, the first tip they say is to leverage existing customers. And this, again, goes to the customer acquisition cost. And this is really a good thing for you to do because one of the best advertisements you'll ever have is personal recommendations and all the tech companies know this and it's a lot harder for them to do because it's not like you can have a friend go talk to your friend down the street and say hey really buy these three products on Amazon although that does happen right but what they need to do to scale that is they create a really great 
um, customer experience, a UI, UX experience where people can see reviews really quickly, really in an orderly way, and they can get feedback from other customers or they'll put it on the front of their website and they will make it look like a really positive testimonials of the product to help get more people to buy their product, buy their service, whatever it may be. But for us, on top of all those things, they're not bad, you should definitely look into them. Using and finding creative ways for those customers that are repeat customers that you know by name, that buy the most amount of your products, finding ways for them who you know love your product or they wouldn't be buying it at the rate that they are, there's probably less than 10% of them of your all of your customers to use them to grow your customers. And again, they are the perfect customer, the loyal customer to be your champion. You just have to find the ways to incentivize them. And one of the important reasons to know your customer acquisition cost, and that is how much money you spend to get somebody to buy your product in the simplest of terms. And a lot of times that has to do with advertising, your pay-per-click ads, your marketing expense, all of those things go into it. And let's just say it's $5 a customer, well then, that automatically becomes your loyalty rewards that you can give these superstar customers, these loyal customers that are gonna be your champion, and that's the amount of incentive that you can give them or less to promote and um, share and advertise for you from word of mouth, from posting on their own social media sites, from talking to their family about it by telling their great friends about it, is you can incentivize them in a many different ways. Now this is what the cool thing about it is, is a lot of times that you could pay them less than you would to advertise and market in those normal channels and they will increase their loyalty because you are giving them another incentive. You're creating more value for them to be loyal customers. And on top of that, that is a fun way for them to have another reason to share and like talk about your brand because then it's it's not just like hey i really like this product but hey look at what they're doing for customers for family members for people that are my friends we'll give you this discount and you can come do it too and it just gives you another reason to get people to buy into your product or service and on again and, the, and a lot of times it can be less than what you're paying the traditional channels. And it doesn't matter who you pay that money to, right? You don't care. If you're getting a customer either way and it's the same customer, sometimes it could be a better customer this way, which is another great reason to use your champions, your loyal customers, because you might get someone like them who as just as adamantly loves your product especially when you really know your target customer and it really helps because people like each other hang out together and most likely your target customer hangs out with the same target customer that you are going after and their friends and family members of the same people so look for creative ways to leverage existing customers it can be incentive programs refunds discounts temporary sales flash sales referrals bonuses, affiliate programs. There's a ton of different ways that you can do it and personalize it to your customer and the products and services that you offer. Secondly, secondly, use social media. Now I've said in the past, do not rely on social media, but I do not mean do not use social media. Make sure that you are creating content that your target audience is going to love and share and thinks fun and thinks creative. Your whole social media should not be just featuring your products and services, but it should be things that are related that your target customer will enjoy, but that they will share and not feel like they're sharing an advertisement. Maybe it's a question like, like if you're posting about how to build a tent, maybe it's like, what is the biggest business struggle that you experience in your business? And you have the HBTD brand in the corner and it's like a meme or it's maybe a GIF and it's just something that doesn't necessarily look like an ad, but it has the logo, it has the presence, it gets people wondering what that is. And 
it's a great way for people to share. And then also, like if they comment on it and answer, then a lot of the algorithms for the social media sites will have uh, like where they'll say like, oh, Matt commented on this or this person commented on this and like check it out. And then that be another way for you to grow your your ads without having to spend money on it. So make sure that you're doing that. And it's also a great way to get feedback, to get insights into who's listening in my case or who's buying your services or products, who likes it looking and using Google alerts and other software to see if there's any negative or positive comments about your company. Those are all really important things and a great way to grow your customers because again, people hang out with each other and you can see friends of the people that follow your page. You can do a whole bunch of other stuff. You can direct ads directly to them and find people with similar interest. Then one of the cool things is when they watch your video, you can subscribe or I mean, you can pay for ads based on who watched your video and their interest and you can copy that and send it out. It's really creepy, but really effective because after all, that's what Facebook's in the business for, right? That's what social media sites are in the business for is advertising. The third thing is to be a part of the community. And this is a great way to differentiate yourself if you're a small business and you're trying to find ways to compete against the big box stores. And I know Hawaii is really big on this. Like they're all about the local brands and helping out the community. And like, it's really funny actually, like the commercials on TV are so corny, it's hilarious but they're, they're like just local companies talking about the, you know, the island and talking about the family and just how everyone supported them and they really engage in the community and it's really a great. And maybe it's not a local commercial that's really corny and funny, but maybe it's something like you're providing snacks for a school event or you have a water station for a city race that's going on, like they have the marathons or they have a walkathon or maybe it's, you know, whatever it is, I don't know. But you can be creative and find ways to be present in the community and building relationships and being sponsored for community events and get to know people that way. And that can be a great way to build new customers in your local area because the big stores don't have time for that. They don't want to do that. But that is where you can be a differentiator as a small business. The last thing I want to talk about is this incubator. And it's really interesting. This guy, he has been in the food and beverage space his whole life. And this incubator is for food, beverage, and pets. And it's an old steel factory that went out of business in Pennsylvania. And they opened just recently in January. And it, what it is, is this big factory. It's 40,000 square feet. And it's a laboratory or an incubator. They call it laboratory. And that's what, or they call it a factory, sorry. But what it is, is they have $250 million to invest. And it's for companies that are matured. So you have between $2 million and $20 million in the food, beverage, or pet space. So if you are in that space and have those kind of sales, you might want to look them up. They're still br bringing in new people. And they are going to be taking a large percentage of the company, 51%. But they offer you classes. You have to move there, too. That's the other thing. You have to move to Pennsylvania. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania is where it's at. But you get classes on how to do social mar marketing. You do get classes on branding. You get classes. It's like an institution almost in a lot of ways. And they also have services on site like packing, design. And then they have offices for you to run your company and to manage your business from. And they're looking for 20 25 companies, which is really good because like we've talked about before, how important it is to find community in common. And when you can get people in the same industry and in the same startups together, working, seeing, working in the same buildings, you're building relationships, you can build partnerships and you can start leveraging each other's skills and competitive advantages to work together, to go after those bigger companies, especially in the food and beverage space where it's so competitive, dominated by the likes of Pepsi and um, Nestle and Coca-Cola. Man, it's really hard to be in those business. If you just look at Shark Tank and how skeptical uh, those sharks are about those kinds of companies, it's really hard. So 
I bring that up specifically for those of you who are looking for ways to invest. Maybe this is an option to find a place somewhere in the remote regions of America where you can get cheap land, cheap factory, and you can find investment and get people to come and just imagine how amazing it would be to get 25 Christian companies, startups in the middle, mid-sized companies, small businesses, whatever it is, to come to and have a community in common and to help each other grow and to be successful in this world. Be an amazing thing. So for those of you who've been talking to me about this, this could be another option for you guys to pursue. And if you have any questions about that and want me to help you with any of those kinds of things, let me know. I'd be more than happy to. I'd love to be a part of something like this. All right, that's all we got for the show today. So now let's go out and be successful. God bless.